Hey guys, how you doing? Good, how are you? How are you guys? Uh, <laughs> always, always have to do it. Shake, give it a little shake to make it work. <laughs> it is good. I like seeing that you guys always have a new background going on too. Where are you guys uh, travel travel to now? Um, we're still in the same place actually. Mm. Yeah. Uh, oh, so it's we're a different room. You tricked us. Yeah, we're just <laughs> sitting on the other side yeah. of the table. <laughs> <laughs> so no more in Ohio. Yay! Yay! Congrats! Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, it's it's glorious. It is absolutely glorious. Michigan is night and day. It's so good. Even we keep so we keep doing these road walks in Michigan, but they're you know completely different. But people keep meeting us and be like, "Oh, well, it gets better from here." And we're like, "We don't need it to be. This is yeah. already great. <laughs> it's good enough." Yeah. 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 I'm happy. You like don't the, need to tell me. The scenery gets better. You're not on roads as much anymore. And I'm like, honestly, guys, it does not care. I don't care right now. I am happy. Like, this is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So what happened when it, you guys reached the border? Um, I'm surprisingly not much. There's a little sign. There's a little North Country Trail sign that's like, welcome to Michigan. But the, what was surprising to me is because we were leaving Ohio on these like back roads by farms, there was no like state welcome to Michigan sign. Mm -hmm. And there was no like, you are leaving Ohio sign. And there was a little sign on like the side of a cornfield that was like, you are now entering like Defiance County, Ohio behind us. But if I didn't have a map, I would have no clue that I had just gotten to Michigan. Yeah. Okay. We were just like, there's supposed to be a monument around here somewhere. And we like <laughs> hunted around the edge of a cornfield and we're like, oh, the NCT put something up. Okay. <laughs> it, it was kind of underwhelming. Um, hmm. Like I know when we had talked, we're like, yeah, we're going to celebrate there and like just be yeah. super happy. We were right on the side of like a busy road. Yeah. It mm -hmm. was really hot. It was super hot. The day that... <laughs> The day that we got out of Ohio, the humidity creeped up again to like 100% humidity. It was probably actually like 90 or 95, but it was brutal again. Yeah. It was the heat again that you sat down and you were just pouring out sweat. So like, I think it- We didn't celebrate at all at the border. We yeah. took a couple pictures and we were like, okay, let's keep going. It's like, we just <laughs> wanted to- But then within like all. three miles, we got into this forest that was like beautiful trail. It's like well-maintained. Someone had like been through recently. We saw in the log book that someone had come and yep. maintained it like three days before. We were like, yes. Mm. yes. Oh, yeah. I'm like, we're like, okay, we're in Michigan now. Now we can celebrate. And, <laughs> it, and it felt more celebratory, like a little bit before. So we crossed this town called like West Unity. And West Unity was like 10 miles south of the Ohio-Michigan border. And we timed it for lunch there. So like we had lunch there and like we felt the giddiness of getting to the border there. And then when we walked out like the mile or two from there. That's when the heat um, set in. The heat set in, but also like two people stopped us in their cars and they didn't stop us being like, hey, are you all right? What are you doing? Like both of these people knew about the North Country Trail. So like mm -hmm. that was like our welcome to Michigan yeah. is like yeah. people yeah. know what we're doing again. Like they don't think we're just wandering around in the middle of nowhere yeah they're like how far are you guys going on yeah. the trail and then we told them we were going the whole way and they're like wow <laughs> <laughs> they knew enough to be impressed <laughs> so that that was kind of like i think that's why it felt like it already had changed before we even hit the, like official border yeah. it felt like stuff was already in motion and change and like so i think we had the emotions right before yeah, before we got to the official border and then by the time we got to it it was kind of like we're, we're here it already feels like we had gotten here we're just gonna keep hiking okay oh sounds good yeah yeah i i did make some jokes about what we could do in cornfields and like play playing cornfields before going into michigan magpie wasn't, I wasn't pick, having magpie it. wasn't picking wasn't up on the jokes <laughs> i said we could just camp in the cornfield in Ohio. We don't have to go into Michigan. Like we can just stay here for a few hours. Nah, she wasn't having the jokes when we crossed her. Nope. No, no, no. Yeah. Just be done with it. Yeah. That was yeah. right there. Yeah. I can see it. We're going. <laughs> and it, it really like a lot of the times with some states, 
you don't really perceive the difference quickly, like with the Appalachian Trail, eh, PCT you kind of do, CDT. It's really mental a lot of the time. It's not as much physical because the state line, you're going to be most of the time in the same it's an stuff abstraction, for, right? for yeah. a little bit. You just decided bit. that that's what the line yeah. is. But here, True. with but the here. way that the NCT does its maintenance, yeah. We had lunch with a bunch of people who work at the NCTA like head office because yesterday because we just passed through the official halfway point, the headquarters. Oh, oh. The oh wow! Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. They gotcha. don't really know how long it is, so it's, they're like the halfway fun, point like moves too, back yeah. and forth. So they're like, well, technically, this is sort of close enough to halfway that yeah. we call yeah. it that. <laughs> um, but so we had lunch with a bunch of the NCTA's like administrators. Um, and the way that the trail is managed state to state is very different. So like, because it's so long, each state has a coordinator and how the decisions get managed for maintenance and making new trail and like trail routing, you feel the difference because there's literally a different person and like a whole different agency in charge of it in each different state. So like Ohio, it's also run by a completely different trail agency, the Buckeye Trail for the most part. But like in Michigan, they have like a really clear structure. Everybody's really excited about their little chunk. And then they have all these enthusiastic volunteers. So when we got, you know, further in, when we get off the border, it's like every single time we change counties, there's a new information board. And it's like the Calhoun County NCT volunteers would like to welcome you to their <laughs> portion of the NCT. Really cool. Here's a map oh, nice. of the next. 17 miles that grandma carol like lovingly created in photoshop for it's you it's really cool wow. and then you do that 17 <laughs> miles and get to the next chaos and you're like this county would like to welcome you to the nct and you're like okay <laughs> people are passionate Amazing. about it yeah yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a whole new world um mm -hmm. yeah that first day that like we did 10 miles once we had officially crossed the border and then that first day that we were like in michigan michigan the routing, even when we were on rural roads, put you like through beautiful tunnels of oak trees, like all of this really cool stuff. And so like even the road walks were epically beautiful because different routing and it actually felt like North country. It felt like a North country. Like we're still walking we're by- actually in the North. We're, yeah. we're Imagine still, that. Yeah, we're still yeah. walking by corn and stuff, but like <laughs> we're actually sleeping okay because we're not just in a sweat bubble of stank the entire time. It's just <laughs> cool at night. like so much stuff is just a plus now yeah so the the mental yeah. struggles are not th there anymore at least not at the same level definitely maybe, not maybe no no um not the big ones of like i'm just wandering in the middle of nowhere yeah. um yeah. but you still have those micro mental things of like it's definitely better than ohio that's what we're they're yeah. asking it's like the main challenges from ohio yeah but, definitely but yeah in, in a through hike you still have those mental mental things each day yeah. of like hey i need to hold this pace to get here i need to push this but yeah for the giant mental kind of why am i doing this with my life <laughs> no <laughs> that's not that's not there anymore yeah i like we're getting it's still alternating like road trail road trail but it's the trail parts don't feel pointless and like the reason that you go to them feels like okay yeah of course they would want to put us through this this is gorgeous and like well maintained, very pretty. Yeah. And then like the, the roadblocks aren't just like, we're gonna put you 20 miles this way to do three miles of trail and then walk 20 miles back. It's like, if you, you just, it just goes the right direction. Yeah, it has okay. a purpose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason. Yeah. So like, if you look at the map, um, as soon as you cross the straight state line into Michigan, it almost goes due north, like where you're supposed to go. So yeah. like the map in Ohio, after even, we chatted last time from Dayton. It went up to Defiance and then cut east all the way off here and here, all to cut all the way back. So it did like a another loop for us. Yeah. But like as soon as we cross Michigan, it's actually going in a direction we're supposed to be going. going. Yeah. 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 Some of the maps for the Michigan chapter are you open the map and it's just like you just stay on this one road that goes dead straight for 15 miles. That's your map. And you're like, okay, I can do that. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> yeah. At least you know where you're going. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. And, you know, we've done what, 100 and, we've done about 200 miles 200. in Michigan. Yeah. 
and we've like visibly moved yeah on the map that's super cool yeah yeah but these before we hopped on this call i was curious because i'm like i think last time we chatted was in dayton and for us, it kind of feels like a day ago. And then I looked at the map. I'm like, no, we moved pretty good far uh, length northbound from there. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's moving places. That's the only thing that's been tough about it is just the, the very southern part of Michigan. There's not too much camping, camping mm -hmm. um, especially in the distances that we're doing. The towns are roughly 30 miles apart. And they're all pretty large town so it's not even like oh it's 30 miles apart but if we just do 32 then we get out into the woods it's like no no these walking through these towns are really more like small cities so it's like we're going to be in town walking on a sidewalk for eight miles mm. and then we leave town and then we walk 20 miles and then we get into the next town so we had to do some hotel to hotel hiking for a day and then we had to get a little bit creative with where we were going to camp because otherwise it would have been so we took a Nero day in Hillsdale. We had to hotel the hotel to hike to Albion, which is a story in which itself. Which is a rough town. That is a rough town. It's um, the worst hotel I've ever stayed at. Oh, probably. It's okay. It was it was bad. It was rough. It was it was pretty it's rough. It's definitely one of the worst hotels yeah, I've ever stayed at. It's um and then we we, but we would have needed to do Albion to Battle Creek and then Battle Creek to Lowell and then like Lowell to the next town is Rockford like we could have done that stayed in hotels six nights in a row just doing oh, I'm, so glad. I'm so glad we did it though no. it, it's not so much like it's expensive but it's also just doesn't feel like you're really hiking if you're going yeah. hotel to hotel yeah, yeah. The, mo the money is a factor for sure like on a long distance hike you don't want to be dropping that type of money all the time but it's also like when you stay in a hotel, if you're doing 30 plus miles, you get there at seven or eight. And then most of the time, you're not going to want to wake up at five, like if, when you're in camp and like yeah. pack up stuff. You'll be like, ah, oh, it's a bed. I'm going to sleep in until We don't have seven, to check out eight. until 11. We and should then, go have breakfast. And then the entire rest of the day to the next spot, you're rushed because you're like, well, I still have these miles to go. I got to go. So. Yeah. 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 So how yeah, did you look around it? Um, we found some places that it was like feasible to to camp. Yeah. Yeah. So when we when we just outside of town, we were able to find a place that was okay. that was wooded. So when we talked to the NCTA um, members, um, we talked to the National Park. So in Lowell, Michigan, wow. Lowell. Lowell. One of the two. Um, it's L O W E L L. It's Lowell. It's the uh, NCTA's headquarters. Okay. Um, as well as the National Park Systems headquarters, so MPS. In Michigan. In it's Michigan. Their Michigan mm -hmm. headquarters. And they're both of those things that manage the NCT. So when we met up with them yesterday, even they asked, like, hey, guys, where have you camped for the past three or four days? And, and we were like, uh, and, and they were like, if you just yeah. stealth camped in, like, SGA in this place, I imagine, you just stealth camped. We were like, yeah, they're like, yeah, you kind of have to. And we're like, yeah. oh, okay, so okay. you're cool. Like, no. Yeah, they, they knew it. They're like, oh, you camped in this uh, game land or something like that. And they're like, yeah, there's no other way. One of the guys. Well, because the there are these public hunting areas all through Michigan called state game areas. And the weird thing is you're allowed to camp in them like during, during hunting. hunting season, but not any other time. Okay. So it's kind of like, oh. Because if you're going out hunting, it's like bow hunting, right? So you might stay out a couple nights to catch your deer. Yeah. yeah. So like, it's like, well, camping is kind of allowed there. So we don't really care if you're camping like slightly out of season. Yeah. So. Okay. okay. Yeah. So it was, it was fine. We just had to realize that's kind of how it was situated and be okay with that. But from here, northbound. Um, not tomorrow, but the next day, we're going to start getting into like chunks, like big chunks of like pure single track trail. Okay. Like actually walking through the woods and like not rural roads, which comes with a little bit of a downfall because we're in mosquito season too, like mm -hmm. bad up here. Mm. Um, they're gnar. They're, they're pretty gnar up here. So surprisingly, though, they haven't been that bad in the actual woods when we've yeah. been on single track through Michigan. They've been present but okay but when we this area has a lot of bike path 
The bike path. When you get on the bike path, it's horrible. They scare you. Don't go on a bike path in Michigan during the month of late July or August. Yeah, because the bike paths are all these elevated um, paved surfaces. And so the water runs off the top into the ditches on either side and gets stagnant. And so it's just like clouds of mosquitoes rising up from the swamp on either side. So whenever we get to one, we're just like, put the mosquito nets on and just run. Run. I was like Dumbo the other day. They were getting the ridges of my ears and the ridges of my ears swelled so much that like there was like ball, not balls of fluid, but like fluid had like increased my ear size by, <laughs> I don't know, a half. It was, it was ridiculous. It was, I could have flown with these ears. They were so hot and just, <laughs> oh, it hurt so bad. Oh, I can imagine. Oh, just horrible, yeah. yeah. So you went from ticks to mosquitoes. Hmm. I'll take I'll, the mosquitoes. I'll take the mosquitoes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I we can live with this and you can actually do something not, about mosquitoes too. Like yeah, I was gonna knock know. on wood, but this is plastic. Yeah, there's no wood around here. <laughs> okay, I did it. Um, but it's yeah, the ticks, no. 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 Yeah, they because you can actually get soup. I mean, you can get super, super sick by mosquitoes, but I don't know. It makes me more heebie-jeebie with the t- with the yeah. ticks having to pull them off, and yeah, some of them are just like yay big. You can, you can see a mosquito and hear a mosquito. Ticks you have to like search for and look We're for. In, yeah. yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Also, you have to pop them between your fingernails, which is just nasty. So, Ooh. ticks. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They like audibly snap. When you pop them, they go like, and then there's just like this gross burst of blood, and it's really gross. Oh, so it's, sometimes Dang. it's satisfying if you have a lot, but then it's like super gross. So Shoot. I'd rather just slap mosquitoes. She has some, yeah, yeah. She has some cool <laughs> I yeah, you're we're grossed out by different stuff, and so yeah. what I find gross, he's fine with, and vice versa. So I'm like. We sometimes make a game on trail of like deliberately saying things that we know the other one will be grossed out by. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, ew, why'd you do that? She, she gets so excited when she can gross me out. Like if we're just walking and it's like hot or it's a tough day and we're both kind of dragging our feet a little bit. She gets so much energy. I'll try to think of something that'll gross him out. She gets so much I'm energy from right. grossing me out. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I like I remember it. when I described um cloacas to you, which is how like birds and reptiles have sex. It's just one hole to rule them all. He <laughs> finds that really nasty. I don't know why we're talking about this. This is t- oh, <laughs> that's a good way to get him to walk faster. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's she's done a good job. She's found my gross out buttons. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, that's but- good. You seem to be more grossed out by that hotel. And what was the yeah. reason why it was so terrible? Oh, oh yeah. You want to tell us where you want me well, to Well, okay. So first of all, it's two miles off trail up That's kind not... of a highway, which is not bad, but it goes through this um this pretty rough area. You semi walk through kind, uh, kind, of, kind of the edge of the hood. Edge of a yeah, edge of a mm-hmm. Michigan hood where it starts to get a little little rougher around the edges you're not it wasn't like scary or anything but it was just like okay yeah like this is this is this kind of place like check cashing stores and like liquor stores and that kind of places yeah it seems like albion used to be a town that was making money through i guess it used to be part of it used to be a railway town Mm -hmm. and there's not a railway there anymore yeah i don't know what the economy is actually there anymore like it's it's kind of a ghost town that's like not falling apart they're trying to but like four yeah. buildings on main street are open and then the rest are just everything's vacant and it just yeah. has this air of like everybody's feeling kind of stressed out and hopeless yeah. mm-hmm. um so like so we're walking through there it's really late at night at like 8 30 and we're trying to make it to this hotel before the sun goes down because like we don't really want to be trying to walk through this neighborhood when the sun's down yeah with big packs on just seems like we might get hassled so mm-hmm. we get to the hotel early Oh, we were so Earlier ex- than we, were we so thought. Excited. We thought we were going to get there at like nine. Yeah. But we're, so we run into a convenience store, get a little bit of food for the room and then go into this hotel. And the first thing that we see when we're like 
It's 8.45. We see that the hotel facade is like starting to fall off the building. It's pretty rough. Mm, it's and pretty like, rough. So like some of it, it's like fake brick on the outside and the fake brick is like peeling off and like some of the like metal something or other like metal detailing is like actually just like hanging off the side of the building and we're like okay maybe the outside and we're like maybe they're renovating i don't know don't judge the book by the cover maybe <laughs> the like, outside's what's going we on walk in the front door um into the lobby and first of all there's like the fluorescent lights are flickering like a mm -hmm. horror movie yeah it was creepy and it there's no creepy. air conditioning and there's no furniture in the lobby and one side of the lobby is just that two that one-way mirror glass it has caution tape and the lobby door is also shattered. The lobby somehow. door has been kicked in by someone, but it's shatterproof glass. So it's just like this big spider webbed glass yeah. door. And it's just yeah. a like cone in front that says, please use other door. And we're like, yeah, no shit. Um, and so we're walking to this big empty tiled hallway that for some reason has just a single monitor TV sitting on the ground in front of this like one way glass, like a yeah. police station. And then we like get to the front desk and there's a little sign that says like, I've stepped away for a moment, but I'll be right back. Like use the courtesy phone to call me and I'll check you in. And so we're like, okay. So we pick up the courtesy, we wait well, for a we, couple of we minutes. We waited for a little bit. Yeah. We wait for about five minutes. Sometimes that ding, like somebody's just in the back room yeah. doing whatever they're yeah. doing. So we And the, the we door waited. is dinging. Like the door is constantly making the like, somebody's here like boom, boom, boo doo voodoo because we're standing in front of the desk and it's a motion sensor so this is beeping it's happening constantly <laughs> we're standing there for about five minutes listening to the dinging and then we're like yeah we're, and we're like we'll okay we're call. gonna call the phone so we pick up the phone and then we hear the phone ringing on the other side of the desk the just, person at, is just at the front desk it's the, just ringing, it's the, just phone ringing the front desk. right next to the phone like the front desk phone's here and the other phone's like right there and it's the just person like, forgot to take the cordless right. phone with them to wherever they were going so the cordless phone that they are thinking that they're going to answer if someone calls is like next to the phone we've just yeah. done. <laughs> and this went on for 30 minutes over it half wasn't, an hour it wasn't five or ten minutes it was and like, like as we're standing in this lobby which is not air conditioned and like very creepy yeah. and has no chairs <laughs> And like we're reluctant to take our packs off because this is obviously the kind of hotel where people who are having a rough time are actually like living out of. And so there are yeah. people coming back and forth. There are people like smoking blunts and possibly like other drugs out in front yeah. of the like in their cars in the parking lot. There at one point someone had a loud argument with their boyfriend in the front parking lot while we're standing there waiting for the person to come by. At one point, one guy walked past us and said to his buddy, huh, they're going to be waiting a while. And we were like, oh, God. Oh, no. so, if it so we were standing there for half an hour, getting increasingly freaked out. And we were like, we got to the hotel early. <laughs> it was 930 by the time that we got to lie down. So, yeah, it was, it was frustrating because like we had those miles. Oh, and their hot water was broken. Mm. Yeah, to, to So we didn't even need to have a shower because the hot water was broken. And that's why the front desk person wasn't there. Cause she was very flustered and she was actually very nice. She was like, yeah, my plumber didn't show up. So I was just in the basement trying to fix the hot water heater. And I've been ignoring the phone because all of the guests have been calling me all day to complain um, about the yeah. water. And I'm like, yes, I know. <laughs> they, were having, they, were having a they were having a tough time. And she was the only person working there, but it was still one of the worst hotels I've ever stayed at. As you can tell, Magpie's very passionate about really that, si that situation. It was, it was rough. It was, it was, I didn't want to be standing there and I, we had no way of knowing if she was going to even show up yeah. so we're like what if we're just standing here all night what yeah, if she's she been murdered like <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like a reasonable possibility it did for a little bit it it was rough for uh, it was a rough rough uh couple minutes there well it was a rough half, half an hour, hour. It, it was <laughs> and then when we got to yeah. the room at least the sheets were clean but it was okay it was bad. It was there was the, someone had left the iron on the floor and just like burnt a hole that was shaped like the iron in the carpet. <laughs> and like our non-smoking room definitely had been smoked in. Smoked in. <laughs> kind of that that vibe. I did tell her at least the walls weren't leaking. I have stayed in a motel where the walls were leaking. So yeah. it's A plus in my books. We got there. There's yeah. no moisture coming from coming from the walls. It was fine. That's good. The most important thing is that the sheets are clean. <laughs>
Yes. I mean, I I believe that they were. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. They think, weren't visibly dirty. Yeah. <laughs> I think we ignored some things because we were just fried and tired we at so that tired. point. It was, yeah. Yeah. It was just like, all right, we just need to eat food and just crash. Like, Sleep. yeah. So after that and the red roof, after those two experiences, when we were coming into Grand Rapids, which is where we are right now, Constantine was like, well, the cheapest hotel is $62, but. And we're like, no, 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 but what's the second cheapest hotel? We're not doing that again. We've learned from our mistakes. So like we can we can see the red roof from where we are. Well, we're not gonna be able to see it, but like if you look Out across if you look across the interstate, you can see the red roof. And we're red just like, uh, no. And we were walking back from the grocery store because we got in late last night. And um, you could see it. I'm like, hey magpie, we could go just check it out, see how it is. And She's been, she's turned off from red roofs for a while, I think. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. At least at least in the days in there wasn't like old lunch meat sitting in the fridge. No. Oh. Yeah. Mm. That was the the last time we talked to you guys in Dayton. That was the red roof in, and it was also really gross. There was old lunch meat sitting in the fridge, uh. and then when I went to like open the ice bucket, there was there was some residue in there that I highly suspect was vomit. <laughs> <laughs> So that was really gross. Now we're just on a gross out train yeah, for y'all. Yeah, we just so, got on the gross out train. Sorry, we were, sorry about we that. We actually are enjoying Michigan though. Yeah. Yes. This hotel is not gross. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can't always be lucky with hotels though. They're no. always a bit yeah. hit and miss, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the Days Inn is literally the, unless you want to stay in like a luxury spa resort place, mm -hmm. it's like 300 a night. The Days Inn and Almion is it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can't, you can't avoid it. I mean, for people that do Southern Michigan, I would you try just, to you link just your miles to, up differently. Yeah, you have to study the maps pretty hard to link miles up. And regardless of how you study the maps, you are going to have to be okay with what a quote unquote one. stealth camping at some point. Yeah. But it's um, not really stealth camping because, like we said, it's a state yeah. game area yeah. where you're like sort of, but not really. So you're camp. not you're not super stepping on the toes of like, hey, I'm camping on private property. Hey, I'm camping in a place that cops like are, are going to come like public parks. It's like it's like a very very gray line of. We don't have a hunting permit, so we're technically yeah. not allowed to camp here. But no one cares. No. At least for southern at least for southern Michigan, that's how the camping has yeah. been a but little is, bit. Is it hunting season at the moment, or it's outside hunting season? It's outside hunting season. It's October 1st to March 15th that you're allowed to camp there. So not in the summer. No. Yeah. Yeah. But it's from here northbound, we just get into pure like as people keep telling us, just pure camping and people just a good part good of the trail. So we have had some really nice campsites though yeah. in those state game areas. We've okay. had it's been it had some really good sleep too because it's like finally not oh it's been beautiful it's been, finally it's not been, hot. It's been so good and like we're on these like these nice kind of like ridges surrounded by the trees and you're like oh right this is what hiking is like i remember now <laughs> yeah we, we can actually use our sleeping bag again like for a full month i don't think i crawled into the sleeping bag in the tent like ever because okay. it was just mm -hmm. so so hot i was like just taking off everything maybe wearing the drawers and just like sweating while sleeping but now and it's like, like trying not to touch each other because their bodies were just like anytime you touch me i'm like you're too hot yeah so <laughs> now it's like we can actually like <laughs> yeah. cuddle in a sleeping bag and just like share warmth and just be like happy and like it's making it, us we can slower hide, to get out hide. of camp yeah. because it's too comfy in the morning yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like i don't want to get out of bed you're too warm and snuggly it's really nice yeah <laughs> Yeah. So it has its downsides as well. <laughs> it has its downsides. We're too comfortable. Yeah. This is the, well, like this is the first trail that we've done that in a while that we've had that comfort aspect to it. Like the GDT, mm. it was just like we were suffering. Yeah. Non stop. Like that. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Magpie mentally wasn't in it. I didn't want to hike, and I let him convince me to do the hike, and then the hike sucked, and so I was just mad the whole time. Yeah. So yeah. like, this is like, now we're in like the through hiking mentality of like, this is why we through hike. This is why we come out. It was like, yeah, to be happy and to have that freedom and like really enjoy just the moments that we're going through. So mm. it's here again, and it's pretty nice. 
That's good. That's yeah. definitely good. Yeah. You both look a lot better as well than last time when we spoke. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, were we looking skinny how, last time? How, how so? Yeah, you were very skinny, and you can you could see that you were struggling last time. You have a bit more of a of a more of a glow yeah. to to you, like more happier. And we're also outdoors, and so the lighting that, is better. That could be <laughs> the lighting in the red but roof, I mean, in, we're, but we're yeah, also, yeah. I we I have gained weight, which is good. Yeah. So That's like good. quite a bit actually. It could have it could have been a lot of factors there. It could have been the lighting. It could have been yeah. We had. Because we talked, I think, on our Nero day or Zero day in Dayton. So yeah. I think we had eaten a lot of food, drank a lot of soda. So yeah. it could have been a lot of things. But pretty much that is cool um, that she had pointed out that she's, we've both been putting on weight more than yeah. actually like dropping it all off. Yeah. So from like Milford to where we are now, Grand Rapids, we haven't had to do like a packed out resupply for almost three weeks. I don't know how many miles that would be. Seven, yeah. 700 miles about. So like there's about a 700 mile chunk that kind of lets you recharge as if you had finished up a through hike. Because like that mileage, you've done pretty much a full, we've done pretty much a classic through hike. We've done a full AT yeah. in terms of distance. Yeah. And normally after that, you would like go home, you know, Just eat everything the, yeah. and like rest. And it's interesting that this, it, that I was talking last time about like, oh, I'm just conceptualizing this as like, okay, when we finish the Buckeye, then I'm going to start the NCT. Really? Like I'm almost done this trail and then I'll start the next one because that really is what it feels like also that the trail gives you because you're going through town almost every single day, multiple towns. So we've you're... just been walking and eating, nothing in the pack, not too much water, not too much food, just snacks and like, it really feels like okay yeah and now we're starting our next through hike like we've had a chance to recover do some super easy miles on bike path and like now it's like okay we're back on another trail and like we're through hiking again yeah yeah because you wouldn't expect anyone to say that they gained weight midway through a four thousand mile through hike but it's just we've been able to eat in towns every day yeah. um like we've been able to eat like cooked food we've been able to cram our face with ice cream like there's a lot of like <laughs> benefits of it but it's also it cuts your pace in like it i wouldn't say it's been cutting our pace too much i i, I don't know I, there's a difference sometimes between like just having that weight on your back and being like okay i can just go for five six days and even if i get to a town i'm gonna sit in the park eat out of my food bag and keep going like yeah. even though it's like small moments like it's 10 minutes going to a restaurant or 10 minutes going to a corner store for me, it sometimes feels more segmented, but mm. it, it's been mm. it's beneficial to how we need to finish the trail. Like with how scrawny she was <clears throat> when uh, we finished Wayne or um, the Whipple down in well, when the we, Buckeye, it was it was not yeah. good. Like no. at some point, we needed to do something with either nutrition or put some type of weight on to be able to continue down. So it is good, and I think there was the largest part as well but we saw last time that magpie had lost so much weight um so you can see that you're both a lot healthier at this stage i think <laughs> and that's yeah that's thank you yeah, yeah i'm not scary skinny anymore i'm just regular skinny and i, and I think too like our nutrition <laughs> and, I, and i think too our nutrition has gotten better like i think the foods and the calories we are eating we have burned ourselves out on the just crap food like the really like high caloric like that's really mostly bad you you're mostly talking about you <laughs> no i think <laughs> because i don't really like all of this high calorie food but like you sometimes you share it with me i would share it with you because i was like i'm so skinny i just need to like actually i need to force myself to eat half a cake right now yeah. which i don't know it sounds ridiculous but i don't i have a sweet tooth but i'm easily satisfied i'm like i've had four cookies that's enough yeah. it's not what I like to eat and so I I was actually approaching like okay if we're going to eat a ton of garbage food give me the thing with the most calories because it doesn't matter what I eat right now I just need calories in my body but it's, it's more it's more quote-unquote real food like today we don't have a bucket of cookies that you normally see us <laughs> eating like yeah we have like we got muffins she, and yogurt cheese and yeah yogurt cheese and crackers um so still gonna not, go do like Japanese food for lunch. Yes, yeah, still not the healthiest stuff for you, but like, like you get 
cream cheese, like all the actual food. Whole like it's actually crackers. whole wheat crackers. Like yeah. it's actually, it's actually a little bit nutritious. So I think we're yeah, doing a we better got, like, job. Comment- guacamole and then also cheese dip which is not healthy but it is very good yeah, yeah. <laughs> y'all have seen that transition too this year of me burning myself out on just cookie he, boxes after cookie boxes he I did can't. not he yeah. went past a 12 anymore. pack of donuts and he went i can't and walked oh, past really? me <laughs> yeah. wow it just is that yeah something <laughs> This little boy is growing up to be a man, I guess. This time <laughs> last year, I hear some eight, good influences for me and from Sorry, Mekfi. I hear some good influences from Mekfi there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I also think you couldn't possibly like do any more. Yeah, I think it's part influence, part just like I can't. Like, no. I just it just makes me feel a little nauseous thinking about it, being like, Mm-mm. this time last year when we finished the ddt yeah he ate four dozen donuts himself yeah in the space of three days <laughs> two days wow. two less, days less than 48 hours it was a joke i was doing it for a joke he and ate then... 48 donuts in 48 hours he had a donut an hour average but he was not consuming them in an average fashion no no it was a <laughs> It was a joke that backfired on me because nobody else thought it was funny. They're just like, dude, so he, he was looks just sick. like, he so looks he was just like, the more donuts I eat, the funnier it gets, right? And we were sitting with my friend Jasper, and Jasper was just like, "What is wrong with you?" I just met this, this is person. the first time that he met my best friend, and I was like, "Oh yeah, this is my cool boyfriend," and he's just like <laughs> shoving donuts. In this is my cool boyfriend. <laughs> but I mean, it worked. Jasper yeah. thinks he's cool now, so uh, <laughs> and I'll do I, donut emojis occasionally. It's because I ate the donuts. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, it was a cool joke, but nobody was laughing. It was just painful. It was just oh, too much. Yeah, it took him a year to learn that lesson. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, better late than never. Yeah. <laughs> well, there was slow learner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm starting to have fun with those goals but my brain doesn't hold on to them as much anymore i'm still the egg one is still frustrating me to say the <laughs> least but it's not as much anymore also you haven't seen a jar of pickled eggs since we left pennsylvania oh i scoped it in the mire yesterday oh okay there, there are pickled eggs but you haven't mm-hmm. bought them so it's not that exciting yeah, or appealing <laughs> Well, if I try to buy them, magpies like will throw them out of the cart and then make me walk back to the other end of the grocery store. And I'm tired. I don't want to walk all the way down and put them back on the shelf. So it's a it's self-preservation a little bit at this point too, being like, well, I don't want to walk all the way there. So maybe one, I don't know how to hide a jar of pickles, honestly, like jar of pickled yeah. eggs. It, it sounds hard. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's a, too big of a goal. You can't eat. <sighs> If you would have had that go on one of your smaller hikes. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Maybe. But this one is a bit too much. <laughs> Not a hundred miles. I like it. A <laughs> uh, hundred pickled eggs? I feel like you could do a hundred pickled eggs. I really like that. I had never thought of that. Do it on a smaller hike. Yeah. Do it on like a hundred mile or something like that. Mm. That's more. Mm-hmm. I like it. Like doable yeah. instead of 40. Or four thousand six. <laughs> no, not not the right hike for for that goal. <laughs> no. I like the hundred mile one though. That is somewhat doable. Like you'll you be, regret it, but you won't die. Yeah, you'll regret yeah. the decision, yeah. but yeah. yeah, you won't be be in a hospital bed just being it was pumped salt out of poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, speaking of good magpie influences, the developing theme of this hike is that when I give him advice about gear, he ends up he's like, no, I don't need that. And then within, I don't know, 10 minutes of using it, you're like, oh, this is really good. I don't know how I hiked without it before. Because I made him buy a mosquito net in a Walmart before we got to Michigan. He's like, I have never used a mosquito net. I'll be fine. Like, how bad could the mosquitoes be? I'm like, it's a dollar. Buy it. Yeah. And now. I love I love it. Yeah, within <laughs> what? 10 minutes of yeah. us getting into the mosquito zone, you pull on the net and you're like, this is amazing. Well, like. <laughs> We had a conversation yesterday. I'm like, Magpie, people actually use gear to become more comfortable in the environment they're in. I'm like, why don't they just choose to suffer? Like, that's how I've always done my hikes. Like, 
<laughs> on Wisconsin, like the buff I use to just cover my ears from going purely insane from the mosquitoes was like terrible. It didn't work. And I could and I could have revamped and done something, but I'm like, you just didn't think of it. Don't you're just people like, this just, is how it is. Don't people just choose to suffer harder and test their mentality and but it's not it's even not, like you're choosing to suffer. You're just like, no, there's no alternative. There's no choice. I must. And instead of thinking like, I'm sure someone has thought of a solution to this problem before. I'm becoming more of a gear junkie. I it's, turned uh, him on too. Yeah. I've like been passing him my um my trowel for digging when it's time to dig a cat hole. Yeah. He's like, I can't find a nice spot. I can't find a spot where I can dig with my foot. I'm like, here's my trowel. And just the other day, he's like, magpie, I think I'm on team trowel. I think I'm going to buy one. <laughs> <laughs> and I taught him how to set up his tent properly and he's like oh tents actually work when it rains I thought you just got wet I'm like no the that reason, makes me sound the reason that really there, bad I mean, but yes kidding. but yes there was times I got wet with my tent set up that because he didn't full, realize yes. that you're supposed to like he's like all these little things on the fly actually mean something yep <laughs> generally it does there's a purpose to them <laughs> micro spikes thermals everything I think I like to push back just to push back sometimes, maybe, maybe a little bit. You just don't like the idea of being a gearhead. No. But unfortunately, I work at a gear store, mm -hmm. so you're yeah. stuck with me. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> I have another one. We're, we're, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're living in a, in a happy world here. It's, it's been pretty, pretty good. Lately. And we're going to REI today. Feels okay. good. Oh, nice. Very good. Yes. <laughs> I'm excited. I get to do warranties. Okay. Oh, yep. very good. I mean, I get to have stuff that's not broken. That's the exciting part. That's yeah. Amazing. I'm the I'm the guy that when we go to IKEA together, she just shoves me to the food court and says, "Here's the here's like, the husband waiting area or something." It's and the just the boyfriend babysitter. The cafeteria <laughs> at IKEA is the boyfriend babysitter. You just put him there to go eat meatballs, and then you go buy stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'm fine with eating the meatballs. Like it's just not on the other stuff doesn't really appeal to me. Yeah, but it's okay. I'm I can eat so more meatballs. So at REI, it's also that except they don't have a cafeteria. No, I'll bring my own pocket snacks. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think I had here. See, she's even got me prepped. Usually, I would just complain that I didn't bring pocket snacks, but now I'll bring pocket snacks and be like, yes, I brought pockets. <laughs> pocket muffins. All right. Pocket eggs. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You're gonna get us kicked out of the REI if you bring pocket eggs. <laughs> yeah, <probably. laughs> Unless they're chocolate they eggs, good. but that time fell. Oh, <laughs> chocolate eggs! I like that you too. You can do four thousand seven hundred chocolate eggs. I bet you could manage that. That also makes me sick. That's true. It will make just four thousand. Yeah, <laughs> four thousand seven hundred of anything will make you sick. Like yeah. no matter what it is, yeah. four thousand seven hundred heads of broccoli would make you sick. Yeah. Yeah. Most probably, likely. Probably, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And are you guys stoveless? No, we cook. Okay. Um, we, out of the past, again, that Milford to Grand Rapids area. We've cooked, I think, three dinners. We've cooked, yeah. We've one, just eaten a lot of gas station food. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So one day we actually cooked on trail, which was rare for us because yeah we would just pick up like a sandwich here a sandwich there mm -hmm. and i don't think she was eating dinner that night for some reason or she had eaten previously so i was just gonna cook the ramen like i was just like okay i want a ramen or something we pulled out the pots and there was so oh. much mold in them because we had forgot that we we forgot forgo that we cooked in it yeah. and then we didn't cook we again for like a uh, week uh, oh uh, so that was a bit revolting I drank a little yep. bit of mold that day. So. Well, we cleaned the pot really thoroughly and then boiled it and then he cooked. So. Yeah, yeah. so did all the safety precautions not to actively eat the mold, but it was pretty nasty when you first saw it. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, but other than that. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I don't know if you guys have done a bunch of, you haven't done a ton of hiking in the U.S., have you? No, no, no. Mm -hmm. So gas stations in the U.S., I don't know how they are in Europe or Australia, but gas stations in the U.S. are like little miniature supermarkets sometimes. And so they'll often have like hamburgers, chicken tenders, pizza, like little tiny personal pizzas that are just like heat and eat kind of things. And so you can actually like get a hot dinner at a gas station in a lot of the U.S. 
Mm. They're more like truck stops or like small truck stops yeah. than like just a place to get gas. So we've been eating a ton of gas station Ooh. food. Cause they're not like that in Canada for the most part. Yeah. So like eating out of a gas station in Canada is like, ah, do you want Skittles or beef jerky? But yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> here it really depends on the area that you're in. So if you're more remote, it's more road houses where yeah. they make burgers and yeah. um, and some fre fresher food as well as far as can be fresh here. But yeah, and otherwise it's mainly just fried stuff that you can get. In yeah, or prepackaged pre packaged sandwiches, and and what's yeah. big here are pies. Yeah, like, like beef, pies, beef pies. pies. Yeah. Um, I've had some like there's an Australian pie place. This is not relevant to the trail at all, but there's a place in Whistler that does Australian style pies, and I go there for lunch quite a bit. Because the fresh ones are really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, they are. are. Australian pie and a U.S. pie. It's just more meat pies. They're just like personal sized and it's just yeah. like a thing that you can have for lunch instead of a sandwich. Like instead of going out to grab like a Subway sandwich, you yeah. might just run out and get a pie. Oh, so it's like a pot pie. It's like a pot pie or something, but just. Yeah, it's like a pastry different. with with um, either beef filling or bacon and, or bacon eggs, and eggs. And, eggs and yeah. oh. like a bit of a pastry pie with with filling. It's yeah. very I good. Want they just have more, really they have more flavors of it too because it's like a normal lunch item instead yeah. of like a fancy food so yeah. like it's a, like a quiche pie yeah it's so oh, popular wanted, yeah. yeah it's it's uh, something so like one of the most typical australian foods that that there are yeah yeah pie so. can you ha can you eat it just like handheld or do you need like yeah. forks and knives no no oh i want it so bad i want to be walking down the trail eating a pie oh well so in the upper part of michigan the northern part of michigan they do have these things that are similar they're called pasties yes i want that, that are like hand held they're like sausage shaped but it's pie on the inside oh like pastry things that you hold like a pizza pocket no. so, I, want that too. I want that too similar deal so we'll have to get you some of those yes yeah. well that sounds good <laughs> <laughs> so what are the main items that you have to um get warranty for so the main one is the sleeping pad is defective mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so we talked about that already right yes. that it's getting pinholes so i've got to email them back today and see if they'll mail me one i haven't checked my email yet because it's we just woke up yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, and then my black diamond trekking poles that are they're extendable ones. Oh. One of them is stuck in the sh shortest position, right. yep. which yep. means that I can't use it. Yeah. And I tried to like get it open with pliers and WD forty like lubricant, and it's just it's just stuck. Yeah. So I'm gonna talk to REI and see if they'll replace it for me there because they're a black diamond dealer. Yeah. Okay. But I didn't buy it from them. I bought it directly from Black Diamond, so mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah um yeah and then there's just like um there was a recall on the model of pot that we used to cook in the cedar summit pot something about the way that the handle is fastened on is not secure okay and so that's actually not a warranty it's just like they've sent out an email to anyone who bought it because it's like they need to send you a clip to replace part of the handle mm. yeah so i know that rei probably will have those little clips so i just need to ask them for one yeah, yeah. and then we got he, he needs like a better head net that's not from walmart <laughs> well i don't know it's too it's too narrow for his oh, head and oh. so it's really hard for him to like keep it off yeah some part of his face and then maybe some socks um new socks the socks are getting giant holes and um mm. um just tweak a little little bit of maybe get things. you some bug repellent so you don't always yeah. have to use my bug spray yeah. get some mm. deep get some get some actual deep um maybe water filter just the small things oh sunglasses um, i don't know if i have them i've had these shades that like when i wear them now they're crooked okay. so like oh, yeah. weird so the light's coming in and then also the lenses all, have popped out all on one of the, like so he keeps pushing them back in but also all the protective film yeah. or whatever it is is scratched so it's like i'm looking through bubbles when i'm putting them on mm -hmm. and i have to wear them on the road walks and it just is so uncomfortable looking at like a grainy world in front of you so yeah yeah a few, yeah. A few little tweaks it's like little stuff that you replace on a through hike otherwise just yeah. like yeah the things that wear out it's not yeah. it's not any of the big stuff um tent sleeping bag 
Those are doing yeah. okay. Those are doing good. Um, mm-hmm. It's not any of the big stuff. It's just the small stuff. How are the shoes doing? Because last time I think you were still walking on the flip flops. Oh. The torture chambers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I made I I made him get new ones. He was like just he was thinking about it and thinking about it, and he was getting stubborn about like I'm gonna keep these shoes. And I my feet would have been so trashed at this point if I if I kept them. Oh my god! Sometimes when I nag him about something that's in his best interest, he it makes him get more stubborn about it. So I just noticed he was like he was about to dig in on these shoes, and I was like, (laughs) okay, I'm just gonna like not mention it, but um like quietly googled if there was a running store in one of the towns we were about to pass through found it told him about it and he was like yeah 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 i definitely need to replace the shoes when we get to like this town well we we got to that town out of dayton figured out that that running store was like a mile away over a bridge off trail which was fine we could have made it there we had lots of time for lunch but he was like no 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 we're not i'm not gonna do that i'm like okay fine and then i googled again and found out that in the next town where we had a hotel booked to stay there was also a running store they also sold ultras and i checked their online inventory and they had his size of the ones that he needed and i just didn't say anything (laughs) and i got way ahead and then when i was like 20 minutes away i was like i'll meet you at the hotel i'm going to a running store to buy you shoes (laughs) and he's like i don't need shoes and i'm like well I'll meet you at the hotel. Yeah. <laughs> it was... Ran in there, got the shoes, came back, and he put them on. He's like, "Oh, thank you. This is so much better." <laughs> it was very, it was very sweet. She was, yeah, ten minutes ahead, and like, there's a junction where we had to go. That main street of the town of Pequa was here, and then the place we were staying was off here. So she got a little bit ahead, went to the running store, and then I met her at that junction, and she had like a new pair of shoes in her hand. I'm like, "Oh, that is." so so beautiful thank you and then i took a picture i know why they were torture chambers now so i took a picture of the shoes i have now compared to the ones i was wearing and it is not only looks like it's a full size shorter but they look like they look like tiny people shoes like the shoes that i was wearing was like this big and the shoes i have now are like this and every ratio it was like tiny people shoes i don't know how i was Mm. using them Wow. Yeah, I was a little surprised that the people at the gear store in Milford were like, oh, these are pretty much the same. So do you know, have you ever heard of Chinese foot binding? It's like a ritual that went on in Chinese culture way back when. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was doing to myself. Every mm-hmm. day I was just breaking the bones in my feet more and then just making them small and small. It's not good. It's not funny but for some reason that's where my mind just went and well they were really tight it hurts so, so bad i mean yeah. the idea with this other style of ultras because they are still ultras is that they're just like meant to be a more responsive fit for like actually like ultra running and mm-hmm. so they're not very cushioned and they're just like a little bit tighter overall a little bit tighter it was i gotta find that picture and well stuff, and you so were cool. also like because he like buys his loan peaks a little bit too big and then he yanks the laces super tight so you were doing the same thing with the king empties and that's not how they're meant to be tied and it's just the width the width of them was like it's true it's just not right it, 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 it just hurt in so many ways so yeah magpie I, mean, I saved the day she saved the day she i would have been so broken at this point. and he would be so far behind me also because yeah. the yes. shoes being too yeah. tight meant that he was going much much slower to the point that i would get like half an hour ahead of him at times mm. like I, I, there was one point where i was waiting for him for 20 minutes and i was like okay this is not this is, not this is beyond what i'm comfortable with i like, stopped to film and you were going slower overall i was going slower overall but the 20 minutes thing i stop i actually stop <laughs> and take pictures and film and magpie when she goes she just goes and doesn't stop so 20 minutes is a long one it was a long one. That's why I was like, okay, I'm buying you shoes whether you like it or not. I'm pretty sure I went into a porta potty and pooped on one of these ones too. Okay. <laughs> That's what they all say. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we have we have fun feet. ribbing about it. I saved his feet. Yeah. 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 My feet are oh so saved. It's it was it was needed, but I was yeah. Yeah. stubborn. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Oh, perfect. Part of my yawn. It's uh, early for me on a zero day. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost nine o'clock now. But I still am 
I'm not a morning person. I know. I'm thinking breakfast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, so no, busy we're... day ahead of you. Yeah. Kind of. Um, REI, few chores, laundry, um, yep. resupply. We well, actually have to resupply for the first time in almost a month. Every every mm-hmm. classic thing that a hiker does while in town, yep. and then we haven't gotten into any of our emails or messages yet. A lot of them have been popping up while we've been on the screen since we're connected to Wi-Fi. So. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a classic day of our yeah. Nero Zero. Oh, this is how, I don't know if we talked about this. So this feels like last time we talked to you, we had Zero two weeks ago or something like that. And it seems very recent to do another Zero compared to what we've done before in this trail system. But we found, I don't know, there's like a light bulb that went off is we had been doing small days to get into town. So like we had been doing like 10 mile days to get into town to Nero. And then the next day, most of the time, we wouldn't get out of town until later and do 20 to 25. So that would turn out to be two days for 35 miles. Yeah. And we're like, you don't feel like you have full rest in that span. He's like, you get into if town. Yeah, if you're narrowing, you still have to get settled and relaxed. And like, yeah, by it, the time you get down to doing chores, it's like 3 p.m. Yeah, and then when you're leaving town, you feel like you're rushed that day. Yes. Yeah. So it's like well if we just tweaked our scheduling oops, a little bit we could do 35 miles into town do a zero and then do 30 miles out of town mm-hmm. and we didn't lose any time yeah. so like i don't know why that light bulb went off all of a sudden but it's kind of like then we actually feel like we're relaxing we're catching yeah. up on sleep we're catching up on food we're catching up on a lot of stuff I mean, even sometimes it didn't feel like we were doing 35 miles to get to town. Also, it's like we still get there at like 730 or eight o'clock. Yeah. So it's not like we're getting in super late at night. Like we still get to have we get to have an extra town meal. We get mm-hmm. to have dinner in town. We get to like goof off and like relax right when we get to the hotel so that when we wake up the next morning, we don't feel like, oh, I can't believe I have to do chores. And I didn't even get to like watch a movie or anything we're not like temp well we're still tempted to just like do nothing but like less so because we already got to do nothing so it somehow feels like we cheated the hiker system like we found this hack now (laughs) that we haven't really used a lot on other trail systems like because a lot of the time we would be like well we got to do miles that day to get into town and stay and a lot of the times i think it is because of it's two nights in a hotel instead of one so it's a little pricier but we're getting close to that close to the end of our hike and it's kind of like well we're not we, going to have the opportunity to do zeros in some of these places yeah. also so it's like you know. yeah. and also we just we just want rest we're, we're tired want, we're tired yeah, yeah we're tired so like yeah finding this <laughs> yeah finding this hack of oh we can actually feel like we get more rest is it's going to make us better hikers in the long run to be able to keep yeah. pushing so without losing any time not being stressed about it, all this stuff that goes into it. It's kind of, it's nice that all of a sudden that light bulb went yeah. off. No, that's definitely oh, perfect, good. Yeah. How, how long till the next zero day then? How many miles this time? I don't know. Don't know. That's something yeah. we got to do today as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. I haven't downloaded maps. the next map section yet, so I'm not sure. I have a friend that I met on the CDT that lives some about a hundred miles north of here really like a mile away from the trail so mm-hmm. he wants to host us and hang out so i don't know i don't think we'll do a zero there but we might stay at his place one night so we'll figure it out yeah it's nice. it's 30 or 40 miles that we hike out tomorrow well not 40 but we'll 30 do miles. we'll do like 30 tomorrow and then after that 30 that puts us into manistee um state forest which is like a mm-hmm. hundred 20 ish of no resupply nowhere to go yeah so it's gonna be a, it's gonna be close to 200 miles until we stop again yeah um and the, i don't know what that stop's gonna look like yet we, we got we have to look at the maps yeah. ahead yeah. For, for this yeah yeah okay. it makes sense yeah oh perfect cool I think it might be time for us to have yes. breakfast. Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you so much for getting up so early yeah, and, and have a catch up with us. We really appreciate it. And it was great to, I, to hear your stories again. It, totally. Yeah, awesome. I was up at five tiptoeing around the room trying not to wake, wake her up. You don't ever have to try not to wake me up. I, I don't wake up. <laughs> <laughs> try to do the opposite. 
oh, I've woken you up before and you've not been happy. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, it was, it was great catching up. Um, yeah, we're super stoked to be in Michigan, as you can tell. Yes, and yeah, definitely. Just really, really happy all around it. A lot of stuff's clicking that's really to finish this trail. We needed stuff to start falling into place to yeah. get those, that stuff done. So, yeah. Feeling good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Shall yeah. we? Yeah. I'm sure, quite sure. hungry. Yes. Hi, y'all. All right. All right. Enjoy, Enjoy your breakfast. Yes. Enjoy. Thank, yeah. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Guys. Catch you later. See ya. See ya. Bye.